Welcome to all our viewers to the Values University Project. Uh, today I have the honor of filming with uh, Ms. Deidre Berger, board chair of the Jewish Digital Cultural Recovery Project. Uh, Deidre, I thank you for joining us in our Elder series, more of an interview format, a bit different from our short videos, but we look forward to an important conversation on the value of democracy. Uh, welcome, Deidre. Thank you. Thank you, Gabrielle and Values University for asking me to join you. The topic couldn't be more important that we're mm -hmm. about to discuss. Yeah. So uh, democracy, I think very, very relevant for our, our current times. Uh, why of all the values do you think democracy is uh, the one you chose to highlight today? I think that growing up, I didn't appreciate fully the importance of democracy. It was just there and it was something I took too much for granted. And in my experience, I'm trained as a journalist, in my advocacy work, I began to understand more and more that it was a privilege and not only a privilege, that it's something that if we don't defend we will not be able to have the freedom, the liberty, the equality that we need to develop our lives, our societies in free expression. Mm -hmm. It's something very precious. Democracy needs to be defended and not enough people have the feeling that we have to work at this, mm -hmm. that we need to actively engage to ensure that democracy survives and that we need to protect it mm -hmm. from attack. And it's never been more under attack than in recent years. And I think it's led me to say, it's not only always been a value, but at this moment in time, it seems to me one of the most critical values to articulate and defend. Of course, of course. I, I wanted to touch upon something you noted uh, talking about defending democracy, our, our responsibility. Uh, if I may highlight the current situation in, um, to the East in Ukraine, uh, do you think we're doing enough as a global community to defend democracy in this situation? Could we do more? Our recent initiatives, our sanctions, uh, no fly zones, is this enough of a deterrence or defending democracy, uh, is this a much larger scale? The situation with Ukraine and the Russian invasion of foreign territory has brought us to a point of challenge. It challenges our understanding mm -hmm. of democracy and our values. It upends everything we understood. I think the West has come together in a remarkable way. In one week, the world is different than it was before. Mm -hmm. Debates we've been having for decades Mm -hmm. about the degree to which we need with military means to defend our democracy have dissolved. The fears are not gone and there's understandable reason in the wake of World War II that Europe in particular, there's a strong pacifist movement. But sometimes there is evil in the world and there's people who use military means to try and rob us of our democracy. Mm -hmm. Have we done enough? We've done more than I expected but it's not enough, it's not enough at all. Mm -hmm. And above all, we need to convey to the people of Ukraine with their brave president that we are morally and ethically behind them. That doesn't save them from the rockets that are raining down on their heads, but it gives them the strength and confidence to continue their remarkable resistance. In addition to sending weapons, which in this case, I think, most of us have agreed is necessary, it's not enough. No, it's not enough. And we need to make this as difficult as possible for the Russians because we cannot condone the notion that because one country believes another country should be demilitarized and twist history to accuse them of being neo-Nazis that they have the right to invade. There's international institutions to debate issues like this of gravity, where one country feels their security affected. Mm -hmm. You can't just with raw power, try and upend the international world order. And that is what Russia has done. And we need to make clear in all of our messages 
that we are defending the values and the democracy on which our lives are based. It's not the Ukrainian struggle, it's our struggle. That's uh, very well put, uh, Deidre. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, just a question in, in terms of uh, further action we can take as a, as a United West, as uh, North Americans, as Europeans, as a global community in general, anyone who, who cares about the value of democracy, uh, just to play a devil's advocate a bit, uh, you know, we, we are seeing numerous reports from Russia of the, the strain that a lot of our actions is taking on civilian populations, uh, economically, and so on. I'm sure it's only going to get worse and worse uh, as time continues. Uh, to what extent do we want to <clears throat> pressure Russia? Do we want to, you know, fight for our democracy? Uh, and at the same time, not to have too much of a negative impact on civilian populations in Russia who are also taking to the streets, not as easily publicized due to the, the context, but do we take uh, civilian populations from an invading country into consideration and to what extent? Unfortunately, the Russians have taken the Ukrainian civilian population hostage. Mm -hmm. And we can't spare the Russian civilian population under these circumstances. But it's an important point, Gabrielle, that you raise. How can we maintain our connection to the Russian people? Mm -hmm. I deeply believe that the Russian people are not behind this war. There's no way for us to know. President Putin is in control of all the media at this point. He's, it's a repressive society and it's difficult to express your opinion. The fact that 7,000 academics signed a protest is unbelievable under these circumstances. It shows the bravery of the Russian people in speaking out. As you pointed out, there have been protests since day one in Russia. There have been thousands of arrests, but we're not hearing about it. We need to let the Russian people know that we're with them and that we admire the bravery of those who are resisting. It may not be a lot, but the more we help them, the more they're encouraged also to show that they do not believe that attacking a democracy who's their neighboring state will strengthen their own country. On the contrary, it will collapse. Russia will simply collapse as a system because the world order cannot allow that kind of menace, that kind of aggression from one neighboring country to another. Not, certainly not in Europe and not elsewhere. This invasion has not only affected our understanding of European security, but worldwide security. Autocrats around the world are looking to see how successfully we can resist what Putin is doing. If he gets away with this, it's only the beginning of a whole chain of attempts to take over other territories and countries. Mm -hmm. The implications are difficult at this moment to predict, but it's easy to think of how much encouragement this gives to other dictators and autocrats. Yes, of course, of course. Uh, if I can touch upon a democracy again, just out of curiosity, we'd love to hear your opinion. Why and democracy in general as a global community is probably not something we've come to some sort of consensus on. Uh, we see lots of different political structures uh, uh, rising and falling, uh, appreciated, <laughs> unappreciated. Why do you think uh, as someone who's standing up uh, today for the value of democracy, which I appreciate as a human being, why do you think some uh, governments even individuals have an appreciation, understanding for the value and importance of democracy, while others uh, don't seem to be on the same page, don't see the value in uh, democratic processes, democratic uh, political structures? Democracy is a laborious process. Mm -hmm. It's not the easiest way mm -hmm. to run a country, a state. Mm -hmm. It doesn't allow for power grabs in the same way that an autocratic system does. Those who have the military might and power don't like to share it. Mm -hmm. Also the economic power, it runs contrary to their interest. Mm -hmm. 
So I think the more remarkable thing is how many democracies we have today. Yeah. Nonetheless, there's no doubt that democracy was was under attack before the war in Ukraine. It didn't take this to show us that we have been neglecting our democracy. We're not taking care enough that there's equal participation of all people, whoever. I'm American. I've been appalled at the attempts to limit voting rights. It, it is contrary to me from my understanding of what's democracy of the way fake information campaigns are being propagated in large scale. We haven't learned yet how to deal with the possibilities of internet and the inability to control the hate that's being spewed on the internet. Mm -hmm. And it's upending parts of our democracy because an informed citizenship is a critical factor in democracy. Mm -hmm. There have been threats in all directions, political polarization, a surge in populism and nationalism. This is not restricted to one country. This is going on worldwide. And it's accelerated by the fact that we have instant communications today, mm. but it hasn't made it easier. That's the sad thing. We would have hoped that free access to information is an enabler for democracy, but it's not always because it can so easily be manipulated as the Russians have shown us. They are unfortunately masters at disinformation, at fake news campaigns. They have created a network amongst right-wing forces in the US, in Europe, in other countries who simply carry out their propaganda, mm -hmm. um, which is not democratically minded. Mm -hmm. I think the basics of democracy that we're trying to defend is that each person has their own dignity, their own right to participate and contribute to a society, that we're equal members, even if we're not all equally born. Mm -hmm. There's disparities. We need to work on them always because they endanger democracy, but it doesn't take away the aspiration that we try and ensure that everyone in our society can have a say in how we shape our society, that they can raise their voice without fear of repression, as long as it's not hateful messages that incite people to violence, mm -hmm. that we can elect our leaders, that we can make those decisions, that we can have debates about who we are. That's what liberty is about. Mm -hmm. As long as we don't intrude on the boundaries of other people's freedom. And that's where we're grappling in the West, without doubt, with how far can we protect our own liberty and freedom? Mm -hmm. How far can equality go? Mm -hmm. It's not easy. And that's why it's a process that each generation needs to redefine. Mm -hmm. And we can't stop focusing on democracy mm -hmm. as a value. Otherwise, we'll lose it more quickly than we think. Very, very important points. Thank you for sharing, Deidre. Just looking at our context today, uh, with a lot of the work uh, I do and a lot of the work you do, we, we do have this um, one-liner of never leaving anyone behind, especially in our world, like you said, we can the way we communicate, the way we interact, the way we cooperate, our, our, our world is more globalized than ever. And we do have a lot of uh, partners, allies, uh, that perhaps haven't started that uh, democratic process yet. Uh, extreme situation would be current context we're discussing uh, in Russia. Looking back at our context where we're located, well, I'm in beautiful Geneva. Uh, you're in uh, sunny Berlin where you've been uh, based for quite some time. We did have a very different situation in Europe uh, before World War II. And we did see a transition from these very strong authoritarian uh, leadership, uh, politically speaking, to uh, you know, going through that process and shifting to democracies, not just in Germany, but in other uh, countries uh, within the region. Does it take a conflict? Does it take a mass atrocity to shake populations up and make them see the value of democracy? Will we have to be seeing 
uh, further deterioration of human rights standards and mass atrocities uh, in Eastern Europe before we start to see people wanting to embark on that process? It's an important question, a very important question. I think it shows the deficit in not putting enough emphasis on civic education. Mm -hmm. If we don't help young generations understand mm -hmm. our values, debate our values and learn how to engage. And this is the key to democracy. People need to participate. We can't just be societies where we're takers. We need to be givers. Mm -hmm. And it can be trained. Mm -hmm. It can be instilled in young people. And I think this is one important point that we've neglected for decades in the US, in Europe, in other countries. We're not focusing enough in our schools on democracy, on the lessons of democracy, the reasons for its importance. Mm -hmm. It took this conflict to remind us that there's always a clear and present danger that's real. Mm -hmm. We lived in a fantasy world for decades. Mm -hmm. The post-war era for better or for worse, and there were a lot of people who suffered under communism, but there was less open warfare. There was a, an uneasy balance in the world order that started dissipating once the wall fell down. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of uncertainty. And it's also opened the spaces for a lot of the populism and nationalism that has sprung up where people long for a strong voice a strong sense of direction. They need the orientation of understanding our core values, of debating issues of human rights, of debating issues of the boundaries of freedom, mm -hmm. of debating issues of the importance of equality. Where are young people talking about this? Mm -hmm. So this conflict in Ukraine, which is not from the Ukrainians, but instigated from by the Russians, mm -hmm. has shown us that we really neglected this. I think sometimes it takes a danger to make us aware of how precious of a good we have as a society. Mm -hmm. And what happens if we don't invest enough of our time and resources into preserving it and into creating a vibrant, active democracy to keep writing the story the story of democracy started with the Greeks and it's ongoing. It's not in an end. It's not something that's a fixed notion, democracy. Mm -hmm. It's possibilities for us of how we can function as a society. Mm -hmm. um, and each and every one of us needs to contribute to the story. Mm -hmm. That's a uh, beautifully, beautifully said, Deidre and I. I, uh, as an activist at heart, <laughs> really appreciate um, the, the way you encapsulated it. You know, democracy is not, uh, it's not a process we finish. It's not, uh, there's no end. It's not a race. It's constant, uh, like everything, uh, defending human rights, uh, you know, protecting the most vulnerable. It, it's a constant process. Uh, you know, we have to always stay encouraged we have to uh, ensure that we're, you know, peace education is a core part of our youth curriculum. We need to be on top of the ball when you slip with these sorts of things. Like you said, too often we're reminded uh, when it's a bit too late. And uh, this was a beautiful note to end on our elder series. And uh, thank you for your time, Deidre, and for everything you're doing. And uh, we all uh, cross fingers for the current situation and we'll take your message to heart. Uh, we definitely see the value in democracy as well. And we will make sure that it's something we're constantly championing and we, we will make sure additionally to think about these things uh, before they turn into situations like we see now because it is just uh, uh, heartbreaking and tragic and we shouldn't have to to witness millions of uh, refugees and the destruction of civilian infrastructure before we start to ask ourselves these difficult questions. Thank you for the opportunity to talk for the good questions and for together 
reminding ourselves and others that it is in our hands. No, we're not doing enough. Democracy, the rule of law, justice, equality, liberty, freedom, that's who we are and what we live for. Let's do more to make sure that this is the world we give to our children.